Welcome back to another code.org tutorial. Uh, this time we're going to be looking at how to create timed loops uh, using stop time loops and some function calls and features. So on the left hand side over here uh, I've got a quick little demonstration and the way this works is it's just a basic timer. So if I hit the start button it starts counting down. We can prematurely stop it and then we can also reset it as well okay, and then begin the whole process again. Uh, when the time reaches zero, the timer automatically stops and we can also uh, reset it as well. And um, yeah, it pretty much works as, as it's meant to uh, in that respect. So let's begin on how to do this. So the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to set up a few buttons. And I'm going to pull out three buttons here. And I'm also going to, uh, you can use a label or a text area. Uh, I'm just going to use a text area for now. And I'm just going to rename this TXP time. And I'm going to put in here time 5 to start. Okay, now I'm going to rename a few of these buttons. Let's have this be my start button. Let's have this be my stop button. And let's have this be my reset button. So I'm going to rename this BTN button reset. I'm going to rename this BTN stop. And I'm going to rename this BTN start. So I've renamed all my buttons. I've named them all. And I've got <coughs> excuse me, a, uh, a text there to show my timing. So let's look at the coding for this. So the way this is going to work is we want to say when we start, when we click on the start button, so that's going to be an on event that I push on button start, right, that I click on button start. <clears throat> we're going to begin, and we're going to go to controls over here, we're going to begin a timed loop. Okay. Now the way the timed loop works, of course, is that this is measured in milliseconds, so 1,000 milliseconds is one second. Okay, so 1,000 here is essentially one, where you just think of this last number here as seconds. So every one second, it's going to perform the instructions inside of this function. So uh, just to start off, what I'll do and what we'll experiment with is we'll do a set text, and we're going to set the text of our time to be, and we're going to want to create a variable here now. So I'm going to create a variable for time. Oh, hold on. One, because I want to give it a starting value. So my time variable is going to have a value of 5. And so each time, I'm going to, every one second, I'm going to update the information on my text box over here. So I'm going to put the time value in there. Okay. Now, of course, there's no change in time right now. Time is 5. It'll always show 5 every one second. Okay. So we're going to want to make a change in our time. And so to do that, we say time equals time minus 1. Enter. And this little bit of code in line 4 over here, uh, this just means to decrease the current value of time by 1. So if it's 10, it's going to become 9. If it's 100, it's going to become 99. If it's 8, it'll be 7. Okay? So every one second, time will decrease by 1. So that seems to make sense. And then we update the time of our text box after we've modified it. Okay, so remember our everything in here still operates in sequential order. So this the time equals the time minus one, the subtraction of the time needs to happen before we display it. So let's see this in action first. Let's run that and hit start. Okay, and it appears to be working properly. Now I took away the um, the little part before that so that indicate it's a time. So just to uh, add that in, we put a double quotation and a plus. And uh, this just means, this is actually called a concatenation operation. Uh, fancy word just means we put things together. Okay, so I'm going to put time, colon. I'm going to put a space just so that uh, when it shows, it'll kind of space that out a little bit. Okay, so run that again. Okay, that's looking good. It's decreasing. Okay, now you'll notice that um, if you're watching over here before, the time. Uh, just keeps going down. 
And so we'll need a way to prevent that from happening. And to do that, we're going to go into controls. And I'm going to pull out an if here first. Okay. So after I decrease the time, after I set the time, I'm going to do uh, a condition. I'm going to get the computer to evaluate and check something for me. So I'm going to check if the time is less than or equal to zero. You can say if it's equal to zero because we're only decreasing one at a time. Um, but often I like to go a little bit further. Okay. So if the time is less than or equal to zero, what we're going to do is we're going to cancel. We're going to stop this time loop. Okay, so let's see this in action. Run that, start. Right, it's decreasing, decreasing, decreasing. And zero, right, and stopped. Okay, so that's exactly what we wanted. So uh, just to go a little bit further, uh, we can reset this whole thing by doing something like this. Um, so we're gonna go back to design. I'm gonna hide this reset button, hit it. And what I'm also going to do when the time reaches zero is I'm also going to show this reset button. So show element, we're going to show the button again. What are we going to show? We're going to show the reset button. Okay. Now, of course, our reset button doesn't do anything. So even if we ran this and we spam clicked our reset button, we, that's because obviously we haven't written the code for what happens there. Okay. So let's do that right now. On the event that we click on the reset button, uh, we're going to uh, have to do two things. Uh, the first thing we're going to have to do is the variable time has reached a value of zero, right? That's what we're showing here. So we're going to have to reset our time value, just like up here, uh, but without the var. Var means we're creating a variable. Okay? So once the variable is created, we don't need to recreate it, okay? but we need to reset it or reassign the value, as I like to say. So time equals 5, or time is assigned the value of 5. Okay. So this will reset the entire program. Let's do that. Okay. There's one more thing that we should do as well, which is we should update this value. Okay. So if we reset it, so actually time has actually changed to 5, but we don't see that because we haven't updated this text box yet. But if we start it, Okay, we do see that it suddenly counts back down from four. So let's just start it off as well. So let's do another set to text. Where's my set text? Uh, right here, okay. So let's also set the text as well. Set txt time to, and here we actually just put time, colon, and if we want, we could actually just do exactly that because we've already reset it to five. So let's just check that out. Okay, and the last thing we'll look at is how to get the stop button working. Okay, so reset, right, perfect, start again. Okay, now notice that uh, the reset button still exists here, so we can reset at any time, and it'll keep counting down. So what we might want to actually do is we might want to hide the reset button as soon as we click on it. So let's also do that before we get to stop button, hide element. So we're gonna hide ourselves after we click on it. Hide the button reset. Okay, so let's reset that. Try that out again, start, and reset, it disappears, good, okay, and then we start again, okay, so let's go and program our stop button. So again, another on event that we push on our button stop, we are now going to uh, go back to controls here. So it's going to be exactly this, okay, so we can interrupt this time loop that's happening by doing that, stop time loop, okay? And once we stop the time, we might allow the person to reset it. So again, exactly what we're doing here, in here, in line seven and eight. So we're gonna stop the time loop, and we're gonna show our reset button, okay? And that should pretty much complete this tutorial. I'll do one last uh, test, uh, just to make sure that this works. Okay, so let's try that out. So if we run it, stop it, reset it. Okay. So every time we stop, we can reset. That's good. Start it again. Stop, reset. Ooh, hold on, something didn't. Oh yeah, once we stop, the reset becomes available, right?